Sun, chariot of fire, burning with desire as he runs the race. Half light, the moon is always knowing. Today we're going to talk about how to stop a consequence before it's too late and to see an overview of how people get themselves into unworkable situations that really stunt the health of their life. We're going to start with this. This represents the health bar for somebody in any given situation. When we have a part of our lives, like our physical body, that has a certain threshold for health in order to survive. It has a limit, right? And certain consequences are going to shake up those limits until the threshold increases. This represents the bar for consequences within any specific entity of health within your life. This could be physical health, this could be financial health, this could be mental health, this could be the health of a given relationship. This represents the limits and the nodal points in consequences adding up in order for you to come to a place where limits are at higher stake of destroying things. So down here is absolute health, well-being, and workability in any consequence or situation that comes in. You have total leeway and total ability to see things and easily change them immediately and immediately and face them in a way that you have all the workability in the world. And if you would do things when it was down here, things would be way easier to get on back on path in a way that would be better. And up here represents total unworkability, total death, total last call decisions that have serious consequences for your life and have serious consequences for that entity of health that you're working with. And how the universe works is when you're doing things or you're on a specific path where whether it's financial health or physical health or the health of a relationship or anything else that you can think of that applies to health of something, what happens is when we make decisions that have consequences for that health, the limits get raised, the pressure gets raised, and there's a signal that goes off every time that occurs. So as that entity or container, you can think of it as the container, the limit is this container of how much pressure it can take before that glass container bursts, right? For health. Now, there's there's this bar that where the pressure is getting hotter and hotter and harder and harder and more intense and more intense and more intense. And as this bar is raising, there are messages or signals associated with it. So if it's health, it could be like, okay, the bar is raising and my message or my awareness of that is I'm getting more tired or I'm getting sick more often. If it's financial health, it could be like, oh, I can't pay this thing that I owe or I can't afford this thing that I need to afford for my well-being. If it's relationships, it could be like, oh, we keep on having arguments that are impacting our health and well-being and there's an impact there that is now affecting my life and their life. And so there's always a message that occurs as that pressure or that threshold rises. The reason that a lot of people don't want to pay attention to these signals or signs, and in fact they're doing the exact opposite other than paying attention to it, is because there is some direction that they are headed in that is opposing in some way what they would need to do to pay attention to these signals and make changes in order to maintain health and order to maintain the solidity of that glass container that can only take so much pressure and that has a certain limit. So if they wanted to make the choice to help their health in that area to avoid 
the total consequence of death in that area or falling through in that area. And if they want to pay attention before it gets too bad and too unworkable, they're going to have to make a choice that may affect this other path they're currently heading on. There are these oppositional forces in our life where we may want something. We may be avoiding pain in a certain area that feels more important to us than this area of health. We may be avoiding a consequence in this other area. We may be afraid of something in this other area or we may have our heart set on something in this other area. And so what happens is we tell ourselves things like when it's down here, like, oh, it's not that bad. I can take this. It's not a big deal. I can take this. Oh, I can't handle this. It's not It's not that bad. Mm, no, I can take this. It's fine. Mm, it's getting a little harder now. Now I have to start adapting to the painful consequences. Oh, it's getting really painful and I need to adapt a lot. I can't deny that this is getting bad and some people have to get all the way here before they're like shit I should have done something that is really not good and by the time you get to this point it's really really hard to create a change quickly and easily and you're working with something that is far harder than you would have had to do if you would have just paid attention down here to those warning signals and so the reason that we can get all the way here and here and here no matter how bad it gets and we're like no 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 it's fine it's fine it's good it's good until we're like it's not good oh shit right is because even when things are getting bad over here there is still that there is still that oppositional path that we've been walking down that's going in this other direction that we're like okay but every time this this bar rises, I'm going to adapt to that situation and continue walking down that path. I'm going to continue walking towards that cookie over here. I'm going to continue wanting that thing over here in that direction. I am so convinced that this is the way I need to be going to get what I want. This is the way I need to be going in order to avoid something that is really, really bad. And what it is, is that we're prioritizing and valuing from where our current consciousness is, whatever we think we're avoiding or getting in that direction versus whatever we think we would be avoiding or getting if we would actually do something with this bar or this this health bar. But there are things in your life that you might not be prioritizing that could get you into serious trouble. There are certain things like basic huge major things like health and financial security and relationships and things that if we neglect those areas for something else that we want it gets us into a lot of trouble and that when that container breaks of that health threshold or that limit it gets really bad really quickly and we are currently convinced that the direction we're heading in is going to serve us more and the reason that is is because we are faced up against a very limited view of what we can see in our consequences and what we can see in what we're getting out of things. We tend to be here where we're looking at this block in our road and this pain and we're like, ooh, that sucks, I'm gonna avoid that, so I'm gonna stay here. And we are not seeing things further down the line and we are not getting a hawk's eye view of our life and a deeper awareness on a higher level of if we really knew everything about all the paths and directions we could be walking down, if we really understood what those warning signals meant and were in reality with them, if we really understood that path that we're walking down and why it does or doesn't serve us, we would be making radically different choices and have a radically different perspective about what we want to prioritize, what does serve us, and what is going to hurt us the very most. And so this is where we get into the most trouble. And I'm going to give you some examples now. Let's say that Jason started an organization to save the ocean. And he has this large organization that 
is happening where he is saving the whales and the dolphins and getting garbage out of the ocean. And this organization can only really thrive off of volunteers and financial donations. And so Lori, his really, really close friend, decides that she is going to help him do this thing because she thinks it's really amazing and she also believes in the health and vitality of the ocean. But she she wants to help him in order to gain connection with him and in order to solidify their relationship as a friend and in order to avoid consequences in relationship to him. Because in reality, her thing is not really saving the ocean at all. Her thing is not even working on the environment at all. What she is really meant to do is help educate lower income children in Africa. Like that's her thing. And that's what she really, 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 really wants to do. And she really wants to go for that. And she just doesn't see a way to do that. So she's like, all right, fine. I'm just going to help you save the environment instead. Let's do that. You know? And what happens is that Jason is, even though he's so focused on the environment, he actually feels a lot of shame when he asks people for those dino donations or that volunteer work that he really needs in order for his nonprofit organization to thrive. He feels super bad about who he is when he asks for that because the very reason that he's interested in environmental awareness is so he can feel like a good person. And when he pressures people for money in any way or asks for money in any way or asks for people's time in any way, he starts feeling like a bad person and he starts getting a lot of shame around that. And so in order to make himself feel like a better person and preserve his ego and still stay in that company and create that organization, he puts all of this pressure on Lori and Tom and Tammy, his close friends, to help him out. And he makes them totally responsible for the success of his nonprofit organization happening and totally responsible for his mission to save the ocean and the dolphins and the whales to continue on and thrive. What happens is at first, Lori and Tom and Tammy are doing just fine helping him out. But the more his company progresses, the more needs he has and the more pressure is up. And they even offer to help him find volunteers and he still says no because he still feels bad about it. They even offer all of their financial resources and he takes it because he needs it. And they even offer other ways for him to potentially apply for grants, get money, but he still really, really, really doesn't believe that any of that is possible because he feels like such a bad person. And so they're putting all of this time and energy and financial resource into his organization with him. And the more it grows, the more he needs. Now, the reason that this bar has gone up for Tammy, Tom, and Lori is because now they're spending all of their time and financial resources on his project and they have less energy for their health, for their relationships, for their well-being, for their growth. And remember Lori, she wants to educate um, she wants to educate poor children in Africa and create schools for them. That's what her life purpose is about and that's what she values is education and learning because of who she is as a person. And so the more she puts into Jason's organization to save the ocean, the more tired she is, the less healthy she is, she starts eating crappy food maybe, just to survive in that situation, she spends less time uh, working and therefore has less financial resources, she has less energy to think about what she wants to do with her life, and her health gets so bad she actually gets really sick at a certain point. And she still keeps on putting all of her time and volunteer work and energy into it, even though she's gotten really, really sick. And it makes it really hard for her to do anything about her health because she's still so committed to his project. And she's still avoiding the consequence of him giving her relationship consequences, him pulling away from the connection, saying, I don't have time for you. It's a huge wounding for her. And she really wants to keep the friendship because she really values the friendship. 
And so she continues ignoring her own health until that bar goes up and up and up and up. Now, all the way up here is maybe Lori's going to get an actual disability, which prevents her from ever helping those children in Africa get their education and building schools. All of this is because she is avoiding the consequences of facing this relationship problem with Jason head on. What she could be doing is helping be him be held more responsible to his own organization, helping him see that he needs to either admit it doesn't work or find more resources from volunteers or financial resources to make the organization grow without her, Tom, and Tammy's help. It's not that she wants to never help him, it's that he needs to be more independent and reliable to find the interdependent ways the universe wants to support him. And she is desperately avoiding making boundaries in this situation because she thinks there's going to be relationship consequences with him. She is dreading him maybe falling on his ass and realizing his organization doesn't work. And she is really dreading having any of these conversations with him because she's so afraid of the potential consequences. But what would happen if she would actually do that is make those boundaries and show him these other resources and hold him accountable. And now his organization would have all of these other volunteers and financial resources available that, that he would be forced to find so that Lori can now go make schools for kids in Africa and become a teacher there because that's what she really loves. And Tammy and Tom also can be free of this burden to go through the things that they really want to do. And Jason can attract people that really, 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 really love saving the environment. And they feel genuinely lifted up and in their purpose. And when they give Jason their all, there is no relationship consequences, first of all. And second of all, their health is not deteriorating. Their financial resources are not deteriorating because he's also now made the financial support different from the volunteer support. And the people who really love just giving Jason money to fix the ocean, they feel so good about themselves and helping the environment and all they have to do is give money to it. And the people that love doing the volunteer work feel so good about putting their time and energy into this and they only put the time and energy that they want to in. I'm gonna give you another example now. Let's say that a specific relationship is harming somebody's life. Let's say Tara and let's say Tara and Cameron are in a relationship. And Cameron is actually super abusive to Tara. In his words, in his actions, he doesn't really consider her a lot of the time. He doesn't make her important. And Tara is just so in love with every good thing that he brings to her life. Like, she loves the fact that he likes to go mountain climbing, and he love, and she loves how he makes her feel. And she doesn't have a lot of partner experiences of the good things that she, that he actually does for her. And so she is terrified of actually being alone or without him, or of those positive things that he's brought to her life going away. And so, even though her entire life starts deteriorating when he's come in, she still keeps on focusing on everything that he's doing for her and picturing their life together long term and picturing moving in together and all of these things. And he continues to mentally and emotionally deteriorate her health. But she keeps telling herself how amazing it is when he takes her on his mountain adventures and they go hiking together and they see all these cool animals and she keeps on ignoring this health bar going up. Now, if she doesn't pay attention to what he's doing to her, things are going to get bad and quickly. She could actually end up in a serious domestic abuse situation, but she keeps on walking in that direction. What she would really need to do is get out of this relationship while it's hot, while it's not so bad, while this bar is still at a minimum before she ends up bankrupt, before she ends up in a domestic abuse situation, before her mental health is completely deteriorated. And if she would actually just leave this partner, what she would find is there is a man out there that is everything that he was to her and more in a different way, except for he doesn't deteriorate her mental health and he doesn't 
deteriorate her emotional health. And he doesn't lack interest in her or her best interest. He actually totally considers her in everything he does in their relationship. And this relationship was available to her all along, but she would have to see that it was possible and be willing to take the consequence of a bad breakup or being painful and alone for a little bit in order to stay on the ship to find that next guy and to build herself up and to be strong enough to build herself up in order to go about finding that person that was better for her mental health. See, in all of these situations, somebody was focused on a consequence that was right in front of their face or what they wanted desperately from that situation, no matter how much that situation was harming them. What they couldn't see was the other situations that they could be going for or creating in their life that wouldn't actually have a negative impact on their health or their limits in their life in a way that was that negative. There are always going to be consequences in any situation. If you love teaching, then there's the consequence of kids acting up and long hours and getting paid good. But if you love teaching and it brings you your entire life, you're totally on board for those consequences because it's everything that makes you you and you're willing to put up with any of those consequences for that moment when you make a breakthrough with a new kid or you know that you're setting somebody up for an entire life of different choices because you were the one that intervened when they needed you the most. An extreme Olympic athlete, when they're going through training, is going to maybe have to eat a very strict diet. And they're maybe going to they're maybe going to have to deal with consequences of people telling them that they're never gonna make it and that they're wasting their time. But they're willing to do all of the hardcore training, all of the moments where they think they're never gonna make it all of the difficulty that they face in that situation for those moments when they start getting better at their sport, when they start excelling at it. It's everything to them when they're just in the moment figuring out how to do it better. There are consequences no matter what path you choose in life. But when we look at things right in front of our face and we avoid things right in front of our face because it's the thing that is most obvious to us that could or couldn't happen, we miss the greater picture, the hawk's eye view of situations. And when the universe is red flagging us that a certain area of a limit or of, of health or of a container in your life is about to break, and you ignore it because of something that you think is serving you, you're gonna be totally screwed. You need to start opening up to the ways that that thing may not actually be in your best interest and you can do that by playing it 10 years from now in that direction. And you can do that by playing 10 years from now if you leave that situation. What's going to happen when you start getting red flags 10 years from now if you ignore those red flags? What limits are you accepting and what consequences are you choosing into if you continue going on the path that you're going on? And then you need to be open to what different situation could I potentially be open or curious to, to occur that could be better than the path I'm currently committed to? Pay attention to your limits. Pay attention to the pressure cooker. And know that every time something occurs in your life that feels like a, ooh, alarm bell just went off, pay attention to that. Because the pressure will do nothing but continue to rise. And it's your job to face it while it's still a workable situation and while you can still turn things around.